Right. We'll get started here in just a minute. Uh, one of our chairs is having some uh, technical difficulties.
okay. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, wonderful. Okay, let me try to share again my screen. Okay. Do you see the slides? Slides are visible. Okay, wonderful. Sorry for this slide delay. I guess when I stop my camera, something happens. I have no idea. Uh, okay, so this is the COSI uh, virtual meeting. Uh, it's uh, uh, an official ITF meeting and as such uh, the note well applies. Uh, if you are not familiar with it, please read it carefully and make sure to understand it before uh, participating in discussions and similar. Uh, you can ask the chairs if you have any questions about it. Uh, so with that, uh, this is our agenda. Uh, we'll be uh, presenting the status of current drafts and uh, then we'll see some new uh, work that will be followed by discussions about rechartering. Uh, as usual, the presence will be noted uh, for this, we'll be using the Etherpad and the minutes will be taken. I believe Mathieu shared uh, a link already in uh, the chat and uh, it's also in Jabber. Uh, in any case, if you have any problems uh, with that, just let us know and we'll help you. Yep. So, so please uh, sign the blue sheet. Yes. Okay, uh, so now the status of uh, the drafts. We have the hash sick uh, draft that is still in the RFC editor queue. Uh, I have not checked how, how many items are there before it, but I can imagine that uh, uh, there will be some updates soon on it, given that other documents that got in the queue a little bit before it uh, have already been processed. Uh, then we have uh, the web authent algorithms uh, draft. Uh, that one uh, has, uh, it had some issue with uh, the data tracker that uh, is now fixed and we are waiting for AD uh, evaluation and uh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I don't know, uh, Ben, if you have anything to comment here. Or... Not too much to say. Uh, my queue of documents to get to is longer than I would like. Um, and there's a okay. few things in front of these, but uh, next week I expect to make good progress on my queue, mm -hmm. not necessarily on the cozy documents specifically. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so yes, uh, recently we also uh, published uh, the shepherd reviews for the BIS documents. Uh, so now they're also waiting uh, for AD review and uh, go ahead. Uh, and there was a small uh, error to be corrected in the metadata of the BIS uh, draft. So with that, I, 
guess here there's not more to be said uh, for the hash alks and uh, the x509 they are currently waiting for shepherd to review i'm the shepherd of those documents and uh, for the first one i just need to update uh, the write-up with some recent uh, modifications and uh, it will be uh, ready also to be shipped to the uh, ad and uh, similarly for x509 i think i'm pretty close to having the shepherd try the ready so uh, i expect in the following uh, one two weeks to have the, those uh, published I suppose there are no comments here, so I will carry on. Okay, I'm going to the Cibor Compress Certificate uh, and John. Uh, Cody, Compress Certificate. Yes. Uh, okay, John. Um, okay. Are we taking this now or? I guess, yes. Ah, I thought it was in the end. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, great. Uh, so this is presentation of a new draft. We submitted a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, and take next slide. Okay. Yeah. So, X five zero nine certificates takes they when used they take up a quite large number, large part of the total number of bytes when used in CUSI and also in other uh, security protocols like. TLS. And best practice is now to encrypt uh, all the um, identities and uh, private information. Uh, and this means that a lot of old pra IoT practice to compress things in gateways and uh, decompress them in gateways doesn't really work and will not work in the future. Instead, any compression needs to be done in the protocol itself. Uh, so, Draft Matson uh, registered a new attribute, Cibor chain, similar to X5 chain, to convey um, X509 uh, certificate chain compressed with Cibor. Uh, the Cibor compression algorithm specified in Draft Rasa. A Cibor certificates. Uh, this compression algorithms have previously been presented in Ting to Ting RG and SEC Dispatch. It has, however, never been presented in ACE, even if it is submitted there. Uh, feedback from the SEC, SEC Dispatch presentation was to um, much more detailed illustrate what the differences between the profile in RFC 7925 was, and also to come up with more concrete examples on what the compression are and compare it to other existing compression algorithms. So draft RASA has been changed to now trying, trying, aiming to be compatible with all RFC 7925 uh, certificates. Um, there are some, uh, it's some things that are not supported yet, but they, the aim is to support these things in the future. And RFC 7925 is a certificate profile for ELS, uh, but it feels like a quite good start profile for also for other IoT uh, protocols and environments. 
and as we have uh, we have seen that applying general compression general compression algorithms at least without the dictionary we are not tried in dictionaries uh, you're basically not able to compress highly profiled that it gets at all or in best case very 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 little let's take next slide uh, so, uh, uh, as an example, we have taken a, we have made the RFC seven nine two five x five zero nine certificate. Uh, it ends up with three hundred and fourteen bytes. Uh, when we try to compress this with said lib, which is a quite common compression algorithm, and one of the compression algorithms. Uh, standardized in the TLS certificate compression, that uh, then uh, you only get 9% uh, compression. And that is, this is definitely not chosen to uh, get bad results for said lib. In fact, a lot of the, uh, a lot of the example that if it's with only small changes to the one we used here, uh, then said lib actually increased the size. And with our Seaborg compression algorithm, we get a compression of 57%, uh, resulting in 136 bytes in total. Um, so obviously this can compact, uh, make uh, highly profiled uh, certificates much more compact with compression. Uh, it's compatible with X509, at least everything that is RFC 7925 profiled. The compression algorithm itself have quite small footprint when it comes to code and also processing. But of course, the negative, you still need to support the ASN there to be able to, uh, at least on the verifying side, when you decompress the certificate. Then you get the direct encoded X509 again. Uh, next slide. And this is just the example certificate that we used. We think it's a quite um, good example certificate for, for IoT use case. And on the right, you see the Seaborg compressed compression, which is a Seaborg sequence. And in the draft rasa, you can also find the certificate as a byte string if you want to try some other compression algorithm. So, next slide. Uh, so, basically, the we think there is a use case for certificate compression in COSI. I don't know if that has been discussed uh, before in that case. Uh, I have missed it. Um, uh, but, uh, and we think that as, uh, it seems this is a, would be a very good fit for COSI uh, as it can compress the, IoT profile certificates quite much. Uh, uh, another question is, is, is RFC 7925 profile useful for COSI or is something missing? Um, another follow-up question is, what kind of headers should then be supported for compression? Now, we, I, we just took X5 chain and compress that and suggest a new header, but a lot of other options is uh, possible. For example, you could uh, signal this with a header where one is a cozy header attribute, defining, for example, X5 chain bag T or U, and the second parameter is an identifier for the compression algorithm. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you, John. So are there any comments 
for those questions. Uh, I mean, for now, I think we are a very small number of people. So if anyone has comments, I think it's okay to directly uh, start talking. If we see that we have problems, we can always switch to the plus Q, minus Q, I think that have been used in some other meeting. This is Michael Richardson. Um, should it be one document or should it be merged in with the with uh, the uh, as a AC bor certificate document? Yeah, that's a good uh, question. That's a possible thing that could uh, be done. And also, I guess if 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 people wants to do compression, another question is: is should the X509 be changed so that it's already now a array yeah, or something. Um, I would be not too happy with changing the current X509 document um, for something that is speculative yeah. in terms of is it going to be done, where is it going to be done. Hmm. Um, points are relatively cheap. The only fun part would be how do you how do you write the document in such a way that if you have both an x509 bag and a compressed x509 bag what do you do um i think it makes much more i think michael's right it makes much more sense to define these headers in the compression document in, in your profile document itself yeah that sounds that sounds and amazing. I think, and given how short your document is, I think that it would just be uh, seen as, you know, more more IESG churn for less, no additional light. Yeah, I agree that the documents are both short enough that having them consolidated seems helpful to everybody. Um, I would also make sort of a, a meta note which is that in some sense, this type of compression is a static context compression in that you know a lot about what the structure of the data to be compressed uh, is going to be ahead of time. And so you can use that sort of static context information about the, the structure to get good compression. Um, I a little bit wonder if there is going to be a sort of more generic way to apply the same type of compression to other ASN1 DIR encoded objects, as I think was, was mentioned in the Jabber. Uh, but I don't think we need to worry too much about that generic problem right now, because the specific nature of the static context is indicated by the um, CBOR field name that we're using. And so if we do end up doing something else in the future that's more generic, it would have a different name. And so I don't think there's a risk of, of conflict there. Um, would it get a CBOR tag? I'm not actually sure off the top of my head, sorry. <laughs> Are you planning to use it any place other than COSI? Uh, we have also submitted a draft to TLS for using the TLS certificate compression uh, extension. Okay, so that's already that already that has a, a tag which is defining it, so it doesn't need a CBOR tag by itself for that purpose. You could still define one just there is an application that needs to carry these things uh, on their own. The tags are not very expensive. Well, I'm thinking that I'm thinking that the nine I'm looking in the RASA document uh, that 9.1 it creates a CBOR certificate types registry and that looks like to me that could be replaced with two tags. Um, and then I look at 9.2 and I wonder a CBOR certificate signature algorithms registry. And I wonder if COSI already has such a thing. I think it looks like it must, I, I would think, but I could be wrong. 
and uh, the other registry looks like I I can't like I have to look at C, the COSI document, but it, they both look like they're they could just use registries from COSI. Of course, they're they're defining X509 things, not COSI things. But let me be a bit weird if you did, got rid of them. There's not necessarily a one-to-one -one mapping from OIDs to COSI IDs. I agree. That make, cause the problem, and that will cause a problem. We started looking at using COSI. It it looked a bit complex so due to lack of time. We went for a new registry. Yeah, I, I think the complexities we're using COSI, but it would be also good if the IoT device doesn't have to have two red, uh, different tables. What if you propose to extend the uh, in a PKX registry with a new column? Probably be a bigger can of worms. <laughs> would but, be but then it would be an worms, obvious yes. mapping between o OID and whatever. And if someone comes along with a new a new algorithm and puts a new OID in, they would also um, do something for this. We have so a... there's lots of algorithms that are defined with OIDs outside of the um, arc maintained by IANA, such as RSA. All of the nest point. Algorithms. I would encourage you to pick another path. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like people are quite positive. I haven't heard any negative opinion. Uh, and where would this, uh, do the AD have any suggestion where this? Um, Merged draft containing both the algorithm and the IANA registration for protocols would uh, belong. I would have to take a little bit closer look. Um, I, it, it might belong here. Uh, but please send me an email and I will get a better answer. Well, I'm not the AD, but uh, um, I think that COSI would be a very good group to do this because this is really, the COSI group is really all about using CBO right for security. And you are using CBO for security here, so uh, I think that would be a great fit. Cozy is a better answer than Ace, but Jim may have an opinion. I was actually live might be TLS because I think this is something that CTLS may really want to use. I was thinking about that as well, um, but I am not sure if CTLS is going to end up actually using Cbor versus some other custom encoding format. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, they could still use the compressed certificates. Since, and since 7925 came out of TLS to begin with, I think, I, I think COSI is a better answer than ACE is. I agree with that, yes. I think the the uh, um, there is a certain danger that that people start uh, uh, um, messing with this and uh, saving another bit somewhere by by deviating from so uh, Cibo. Um So I would feel much uh, better if we could uh, keep this in in a working group that actually knows something about Cibo. I would be happy to submit the merge draft to COSI if the COSI working group is positive to that. So this 
uh, is related to our next topic, which is the rechartering or what uh, should be the future of the working group. Uh, I think we have a few slides about that, but basically uh, our current chapter uh, states that we are to uh, update the 8152 uh, sorry okay yeah Matthew if you want you can uh, sure. do this yeah uh, yeah so our, our current charter was very specific and very limited on what it what 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 was in scope for the working group and if there was to be anything else, we would need to rechart. Um, and so this this is snippets from the uh, from the current charter where it's where it does pretty clearly say 8152 bis hash uh, signatures hash algorithms and x509 and the web opt in and that was it. So if we want to do anything else, we would at least according to this charter, we would need to rechart. Uh, the next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, um, so with this, especially with this discussion um, on the CERT compression, um, there was also Jim, uh, towards the end of last year, had written the more Alex document that right now has one. Um, certainly this working group, uh, I mean, it has the it has the people to evaluate these things. Um, so the question is, is there anything else? Is, is this something the working group is interested in doing? And is there anything else we maybe want to be looking for? Well, Moskowitz has asked for some of the KMAC stuff at one point in time as an additional algorithm set. Um, I kind of want to do that just to screw up all the Ericsson people over in ACE to think that the only KDF is HMAC based. Um, but that's just a personal quirk of mine. One thing that uh, I would like to see at some point is uh, a derivation of the, the CBOR cert compress work that actually has a signature that does not require the detour over DER. I'm not sure we are ready for that yet, but uh, I think that that would be a, a pretty obvious next step. Uh, with the cell compress work. Yeah, I agree. So do you mind repeating that name one more time? My my audio So right now to to do to use one of these compressed uh CBA certs uh, you need to uh, the, the, the receiver needs to re-encode it into ASN1DR and uh, compute the, the uh, uh, check the signature based on that. And uh, for, for many applications, it would be nice if that step could be omitted. And for performance reasons, I understand what you're uh, advocating, but would require um, current certificate authority infrastructure to stand up a new kind of certificate. I would like to know whether um, those certificate authorities are willing to do so. So one example is uh, dropped Rosa uh, actually 
the first bit the int you see there is a one for compression and zero for a native uh, certificate. Uh, you know, there, there are other suggestions for CBOR certificates, so I have not been talking about that, but Draft Rasa is co-authored by a Swedish CA that says that they would be willing to implement this kind of thing if needed for IoT. So my answer to Russ's question would be, the answer is certainly no, if there is no specification to use for that. Um, so whether the answer is yet, yes, if there is a specification, that's indeed an interesting question. I think that is what my question really was. If we, <laughs> if we specify it, will they come? This is, this is Matthew. I, I think I've personally seen a lot of evidence that does not support that. At least not from public CAs. Um, for instance, there's a number of, there's a number of draft, there's a number of documents that define uh, additional uh, subject alt names for different um, different types of subject alt names, and almost no CAs have adopted any of those. Recent argument on EMU between everybody and Ryan would also tend to support the fact that at least that world of CAs is not going to be interested. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably more interested uh, because uh, in, in IoT, we don't necessarily always want to use web KI routes. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, it's not important that all CA implement this. We should check with the IoT focused CA. Yeah, I think my take from the discussion on EMU with Ryan was more along the lines of you need someone who's willing to pay the certificate authority uh, operators a sizable chunk of money in order to get them to actually do something using it. But they are perfectly happy to do new things if you pay them enough. And that's what I heard too. Okay, uh, so what could be the way, I mean, maybe the way forward with this is we can first see how we handle just the ACBOR certificate compression and uh, look at that after at least we have a little bit more clarity on that one. Okay, so now going back to the rechartering. Uh, well, that's, that's it. So uh, if we decide to do this additional uh, work, I mean, if uh, Ben decides also that it's a good uh, fit. Uh, then I don't know, we can have a discussion maybe on the mailing list to decide if uh, we would want to have some document that describes this now, whether we want to first to work on uh, the certificate compression have uh, an RFC there and then tackle this. How does that sound as a way forward? I 
I think that sounds good. I think we have the interest and the people to work on the additional topics that have been mentioned. So I don't see a problem to recharter to add them on, uh, especially since we've been making good progress with the current milestones. Okay. Um, this is Matthew. I um, so I think one additional question is. Um, do we still want to be as constrained as we are today? Uh, meaning, with this recharter, we are picking up specific work, and if we are um, to pick up anything else after that, it would require yet another recharter. Personally, I think that's still the right way to go, but I'm curious what others think. I, I think I I think I would like to see us very constrained on anything that is not new algorithms so that we have to really think about whether it's work we want to do. Um, I'm less worried about being really constrained on saying, oh, we've got this new algorithm that people are coming in here and want to do and we need to recharter for that purpose. It seems reasonable to not have to recharter for new algorithms but I do think that we should still be equipped to apply some level of skepticism to do we need official ITF endorsement for this particular algorithm. You don't want to do Simon? I hope the group could do that without a recharger. So I, uh, just to reiterate what I think I'm hearing is, um, so we should continue to be constrained for anything that's not an algorithm. We should be a little, we should be more open um, for accepting anything that is defining or bringing an algorithm, that is bringing an algorithm into disposing. Is that sound correct? Yes. Yeah, Carry on, I please. Think that, I think that um, a potential way to do it would be to say that we can deal with algorithms which would be IETF consensus algorithms. And then we can argue on new drafts about whether or not we believe this is going to be an IETF consensus yes algorithm. I think that makes sense other than uh, I believe almost all algorithms are defined through the IRTF to date. But I, I get your meaning. Well, for example, I don't think that any of the KMAC stuff has gone through CFRG. Does that mean, you know, but I think that we would probably be IETF consensus yes on all of the new SHA 3 algorithms. Okay. I would like to see KMAC. Specified for OC. Mm -hmm. Speaking as chair, I think what, what I'm hearing is that there's there's definitely interest. Um, we chairs will um, solicit on the list uh, very shortly about um, about text. Um, we are. At least with this group, we are um, we have consensus to keep the, the charter constrained uh, for for anything other than algorithms. For algorithms, 
we we can be open to new ones, uh, especially for things that have IETF uh, consensus. Um, but we can still push back if if there's questions. Um, the chairs will submit will uh, submit the question to the list uh, to get confirmation and start working on text. Is anybody um, on this call um, going to help define that text? I will certainly volunteer to provide some text if you want me to, as opposed to reviewing your text. Yeah. Anybody else? You can raise hands if you don't want to speak. We'll confirm on the list um, and maybe see if that's listening some others. Um, so I think we can move on. Uh, okay. So are there any other topics uh, that you would want to discuss? Anything else really? Seems that there are no other topics to be discussed for now. <laughs> uh, so I think we can stop the meeting here. Thank you everyone for the participation. Looks like everybody signed blue sheets, so I think we are a wrap. Thank you, everybody.